Alright, let's get this unboxing done quickly this time. And I don't want to waste too much time on this. There we go. Box came from Concord, Massachusetts, courtesy of Synthcube. And here's some Tempcos that I ordered from my sound lab. And here's the kit. Comes in its own little box. So open it up. The plastic bag here. Let's see what comes inside. A little bit tough to open. Looks like. oh, here we go. All right. So complete, complete kit for this Spartan Musical Circuits switch resistor VCF. So nice panel, nice PCBs, and all of the all of the components needed. So. Time to organize these on my bench and start building. Cool beans. The Barton Switch Resistor VCF is a very straightforward build. As usual, I started by placing and soldering all of the resistors from the top, then turning the board around and clipping the leads. Try to leave enough room for the 22 nanofarad caps. They're kind of chunky. They're labeled as 0.022 on the PCB. Next, I placed the IC sockets, then soldered two diagonally opposing pins on each socket to secure them before soldering all the other pins. Then the caps, the power header, and finally the pots, which also mount the board to the panel. The jacks go straight onto the panel. I was really happy to see these jacks. They have plastic sleeves, so your plug doesn't short the ground every time you patch a cable. Very cool. I didn't have the special tool for the nuts though, so I just used my fingers and the tip of a small screwdriver on one of the slots to tighten them. The jacks are the only panel wiring required and it's easy because the PCB is clearly marked. Make sure you ground all the jacks to each other, then one of them to any ground point on the board. That's it! To finish it off you can try this very simple mod I came up with. I had this idea to be able to use the same audio input for both sides without having to patch it through a multi. I'm gonna send the signal from input 1 to the switch in input 2. That way if nothing's plugged into input 2 it's gonna get the same signal as input 1. That's a really simple mod to do. All right, so this is the Barton Musical Circuits switched resistor VCF. It's a really cool filter, really unique filter if you're looking for something different than the usual ladder type filters. It's a state variable dual filter, so there's two channels. Each channel has high band, high pass, sorry, band pass and low pass outputs, but they're both controlled by the same frequency control section which is a knob and the uh, external CV input. You do have uh, independent control of the resonance for each of the two channels. It's really cool, you can use it in series. So connect the output from uh, channel 1's low pass output, for example, to channel 2's input. And channel 2's output's going into a VCA. Right, so let's listen to it just in its normal, more conventional configuration, like that. Uh, I'm sending a square wave from the no coast right now. So. So that's in uh, cascading low pass mode, and um, here let's let's give it a little bit of an an envelope. If 
few things to consider about this filter. One, the cutoff doesn't go very low at all. It's uh, That's the limit right now. I'm checking with the designer if there are some resistors that can be changed so that we can get that low pass lower. Parentheses. I got a few suggestions from Michael Barton and tried one, which is to double the capacitance on each filter pole by installing four 22 nanofarad caps in parallel with the ones already on the board. I surface mounted them on the other side of the board, and that did lower the minimum cutoff frequency, but also the maximum. So it didn't expand the range, just lowered it. More experiments with resistor values would be required to actually expand the range. So I just accepted this filter squirks as personality and left it alone. I'm pretty happy with it. End parentheses. Another thing is the uh, input's really hot, so it distorts nicely. It's cool to use as a distortion module too, but if you want it to work as a regular filter, then definitely attenuate. Uh, most, uh, most of my oscillators were too hot for that input, so I'm always using this attenuator right here to go into the input, especially if you're cascading both channels. Uh, you can also use the two channels for stereo sources. That's another cool use for this. Now let's look at the special feature that this filter has, which is the clock input. This disables the internal oscillator that's serving as its operational clock, which basically goes into a pulse width modulation circuit that switches a parallel resistor on and off, and that generates a variable perceived resistance in the filter's circuit, which creates our, our frequency sweeps. So you can disable that internal very high frequency oscillator with any oscillator of your choice. Just don't use a pulse wave. It won't work well with a pulse wave. Use a saw wave or a triangle wave or a sine wave or something like that in the clock input right here. So we're going to use the uh, slope circuit from the no coast in self-oscillation mode to uh, modulate the uh, clock here and get some really crazy sounds. Check this out. <laughs> So this is the vowel patch. It's documented in the PDF you get with the module. Basically, you take two oscillators, sync them to each other, tune them a few octaves apart, send the high one to the clock input, the low one to the channel one audio input on filter one, and then chain them together. So you take the uh, low pass output of channel one into channel two's input, and then I'm sending the filter two's low pass output to a VCA that's being controlled by a function generator here that gets triggered by my sequencer. There's also another envelope generator that's getting triggered by the same sequencer or keyboard and that's going into the frequency modulation input of the switch resistor VCF. <laughs> I, 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 I,
I'm <laughs> sorry.